In this tutorial, I will show you how to create interactivity in your animations using buttons with pop-ups. We're going to click File, New, Advanced, HTML5 Canvas, and Create. The first thing we're going to do is rename this layer one to Objects. Create a new layer and call it Action. Now on the Objects layer, we're going to create a button by first creating a rectangle. And I'll select that, change the color. Then I'll use the text tool to click and drag a text box and I'll type click. Click the selection tool, change the color of the text, move it around and that's the button. We're going to click and drag those objects, right click, Convert to symbol. For the name, I'll call it button one. For the type, make sure button is selected. And that gives you a button timeline, which we'll go into and click OK. For the instance name, we're going to call it button one. The instances will appear when we're coding this later, which we'll also get to. Now we can create our pop-up. So I'll create a rectangle again. Now it's white, so I've just selected it and I'll change it to yellow. Use my text tool to add text. Pop up, use the selection tool, change the color and move the text. So this is now our pop up. We're going to click and drag around all of that. Right click, convert to symbol. But this time we're going to change the type to movie clip, which gives us a standard animation timeline. And the name will be pop-up one and okay. Now we're going to double click into the pop-up object or symbol. And then we get the timeline for the pop-up symbol. So I'm going to double click on layer one. I'm going to call it objects. I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to call that action because again, that is where our code will go. I'm going to click on objects and right click and choose to create a motion tween and OK. And that converts that to another symbol. So we've got a symbol inside of a symbol. So for example, if I wanted to edit anything about this pop up, I'll double click and you can see now we've got we're in scene one pop up one, which is a symbol and then inside of the pop-up one symbol, we've got another symbol called symbol one. You can rename these if you go into library and instead of symbol one, you can right click and rename and you can call it pop-up one objects. And that means you can double click on the text and you can 
edit the text. And to go back, you just click on pop up one. And we're back here to our motion tween. I want to click on frame one for the object layer. Go to object. Go to color effects list, choose alpha and choose zero. Go to frame 12. Back to object. This time we're going to drag alpha to 100. We're going to go to the last frame, 24. Object alpha zero. And if I play this through, we're fading in and fading out. And that'll be our effect for this pop-up. I'm going to go to frame 12 on the actions layer this time. I'm going to right click and insert a keyframe. And I'll do the same for frame 24. Now we're going to put our actions. We're going to add stop actions here. So we're going to click on frame one for the action layer. Click window, actions, add using wizard. Then we're going to scroll down to stop this timeline next. With this frame, finish and add. We'll do the same for frame 12. Add using wizard. Stop this timeline next with this frame, finish and add. I'm going to close the actions window. I'm going to click on scene one. I'm going to make sure pop-up one is selected by clicking on pop-up one in the objects layer. We're going to put the instance name as pop-up one, then click on frame one for the actions layer. Click on window, actions, add using wizard. And we're going to set our play action for the pop-up when that button is pressed. So we're going to click play. We're going to choose what to play, which is pop-up one. Next, when we click, so on mouse click, and when we're clicking on button one. Finish and add. You can close the actions window and go into control and test. This will open up in your default browser. I can move my mouse over the click button, press click, pop up appears, press the button again, pop up disappears. We'll click back onto the timeline. We will double click the click button. And here is where you will see the button timeline. So we can click on insert keyframe to get the over instance. So that means when I move the mouse over the button, what should be different? So I can click on the text, for example, and change the color to yellow. So now when the button is not in contact with the mouse, and this is what it looks like. When the mouse is over the button, this is what it looks like. Then we can insert a keyframe again. And then down means when the mouse is clicked down on the button, what should it look like? So I'm going to click and drag to highlight everything. I'll click on the transform button. I'll make sure constrain is clicked and I'll choose one of the dimensions here and drop it down to 90 and press enter. And that just zooms the button out to make it look like the mouse has pushed the button down. I'll go back to scene one, control, test. Now you can see when I move the mouse over, the text goes yellow. And when I click, the button goes smaller. 
to show it's clicking down on the button just to give that effect. Now, suppose we wanted to add in the pop-up a close button. We can do that. We'll go back to our timeline. We will double click the pop-up. Now, if it's hard to see, you can always go into library and double click pop-up one from the library as well. We're going to add a new layer and I'm going to call that close. And I'm going to right click the rectangle tool and draw an oval. And I'm going to have a text box where I just put in a capital X to represent a close button. I'll click the selection tool, go back to properties, choose the color as black and then move that into the circle. Nudging with my keyboard if I need to. Now I'm going to click and highlight the circle and the X. Right click and because it's a button, we must convert to symbol, making sure that we choose button for type. And I'm going to call this close. Now, if I want that to fade in with the pop-up when it's animating, we can do that as well. So we would have to right click, create a motion tween. And just like we did with the object layer, we're going to click on frame one for close object. We're going to choose alpha from color effects. It's already now down to zero. We're going to go to frame 12 object, drag alpha to 100, then frame 24, object, alpha back down to 100. So now if we go back to scene one and control and test, when we click, we see the pop-up with the button. The button doesn't do anything yet. So let's add an action. So we're going to go back to the pop-up. So back to pop-up one. Now we need to click on the close button and we need to give the instance name. I'll call it close. Now we're going to click onto frame one of the actions layer. And we're going to go to window actions. And if add using wizard button isn't highlighted, just go back and click frame one again. Now we're going to go to frame number and play this timeline. And we want it to play from frame 12. So I'm going to change the 50 to 12 next. And it's going to be when we click the close button. So on mouse click and close. Finish and add. Can close the actions panel. We can go back to scene one, control and test. So now we click the button, pop up opens, close button, now closes the pop up. You can also animate the close button the same way we animated the click button. So if we go back to timeline and we double click pop up one and we click on the close button, double click, you get the same options for over. So I'll click insert keyframe. So in this case, we double click. We click the selection tool. We can change the color. This time I'll choose red. Then add a keyframe. And for down, we can click and highlight everything. 
choose transform and choose 90 and enter and then go back to scene one control and test so click button mouse over close goes red clicking the close button reduces the size and closes the pop-up thank you for watching